what I think about that is that he is who he's always been, yep. and he's not going to gain any voters in these last 10 but that's, days. Yeah, that's the point. I mean, that you're not, you don't want to talk no, about his no, 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 no
Watch. I think that she should keep calling Donald Trump a fascist. And I think that Americans need to keep looking at the rhetoric of Donald Trump because I don't know why we're even thinking about electing somebody who's talking about putting people in camps. I don't know why we're talking, why we want to elect somebody who's talking about mass deportation. I don't know why we're having this conversation which about somebody who wants to terminate the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election. Aren't we supposed to be a patriotic country? Whenever somebody like Colin Kaepernick takes a knee in this country, everybody talks about, oh, that's so unpatriotic. But a guy, a, a guy can say he wants to terminate the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election and nobody cares. And like even, even, even me bringing it up now, you, you brought it back to Kamala and Joe Rogan. Anderson? Yeah. Who gives a damn? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think you give damn who's elected president. And yeah, I'm, I'm especially asking if that you... president is a fascist. That's right. talking about putting people in camps. That's talking about, once again, terminating the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election. That's talking about, you know, jailing his political opponents. Yeah. Like, that rhetoric doesn't scare people? Well, we, we talk about this every single... This is what, I, I, I don't think I've been talking about, about this every, every night. I don't think y'all have enough conversations about it. I feel like I heard more on this network about is Kamala Harris black than I do about, you know, yeah. Donald Trump being a fascist. Well, that's... Am I wrong, uh, Angela? Uh, honestly, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. Oh, I like that. That's no, Go that, ahead, that is that, that. No, no, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. Look, I'm a huge fan of yours. Okay. But to say that we're sitting around talk, discussing is Kamala Harris black? Like I. Oh, I mean, I've seen that. I've seen oh, those roundtable discussions on. a lot. That's now that's true. bullshit, Anderson. For you to say that y'all don't have those conversations, uh, I have never asked somebody. Is oh, I'm not saying Kamala you. Harris. I said not the you. network. He said the network. He I don't think anyone. On, I, you know, I don't think any anchor on this network has been going around saying, "Is, is she black?" Y'all have never it's had definitely, a. It's I, I mean, definitely. We have been... had. Uh, look, I'm sure we have had, you know, nutty people or or people <laughs> who have strongly held beliefs who I may disagree with, yeah. who somewhere on some panel have mm -hmm. said something, but yeah. I, you know, I will just but speak even, up for, for what I do on the show. I do believe it's important to get people different viewpoints as long as they're willing to have a legitimate conversation. It's a, what I don't like is, are surrogates who come out and just spout talking points that they don't even believe. And those yeah. are people I tried to eliminate from having ever on the air again. Now, clearly, Charlemagne was smoking something, drinking something before he sat down and he made those comments because we all know that at least 90 percent of the coverage on CNN is Trump is bad. I mean, we know that. For a fact. So to say that they're not doing enough is a uh, an excuse because at this point they're desperate, right? They're panicking. They're frantic. What else can we do? Okay, let's start complaining to the people who's already been uh, criticizing Trump, but tell them to criticize them more instead of doing what we keep saying, which is why are you not speaking to the voters and telling them what they want to hear? No one wants to hear that, hey, you, if you're not going to vote for Kamala Harris, that means you're a sexist, you're misogynistic, or you're racist. I mean, no one wants to hear that, right? Uh, the other thing is this whole, well, she's being held to a double standard. No one wants to hear that either. You're running for the biggest, most important, powerful position in the United States of America. We don't have room for excuses here. You either can get the job done and get elected or you can't. You can either answer the questions that voters have or you can't. And how do we know that what we're talking about is facts? It's because that there are still people who see Trump as a threat to democracy, but they still won't support Kamala Harris. Listen to this story. The Washington Post has just said, in terms of endorsing a presidential candidate, that it will not endorse a candidate this election cycle. And they will not be endorsing candidates in any future elections. I mean, they are changing decades of tradition for them at this point, 11 days out, from a presidential election. Kaylee. Yeah, this is a big deal. The Washington Post is a left-wing publication. The Washington Post, remember, had the austere scholar language before. Uh, they are, by all measures, I would argue, one of the most left-wing publications in the nation. New York Times gives them a run for their money. And they are choosing not to endorse Kamala Harris. They have endorsed all the theories about what a threat to democracy Donald Trump is. Go read their editorial page. Go read their reporting. And they're not endorsing in this race. What a way to undercut, kneecap, totally undermine Kamala Harris's closing argument. This guy is a fascist. This guy is unpalatable. This guy is a threat to democracy. Oh, but we're not going to endorse in the race. What an insult to Kamala Harris. And add to that the L.A. Times and add to that the unions. Kamala, who do you have when you've lost the Washington Post? OK, so before we get into that, if you guys are getting value from this video, do us a favor. 
Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you want to support us further, go to the link in the description below. Uh, you can grab yourself a t-shirt or buy us a cup of coffee. Now, one has to ask themselves, why is this happening to Kamala Harris? Because let's go down the list. She didn't get endorsed by the Teamsters Union, which is huge. Uh, she didn't get endorsed by the International Association of Firefighters. She didn't get endorsed by the Fraternal uh, Police uh, Association. I, I might have those words incorrect. She didn't get endorsed by the Steelworkers Union. She didn't get endorsed by the L.A. Times. And now she's not getting endorsed by the Washington Post. So at this point, you have to say, is it really sexist? Is it really that people are misogynistic? Or is it that she's not <laughs> the candidate that Democrats even want, but they have to tolerate her? And some people are not going to go along with that. Now, because they're so focused on Trump is bad, um, they're missing the message that a lot of voters are trying to communicate to them. And of course, MSNBC, they still do go out and interview voters. And here's a couple of young voters who are men on why they're voting for Trump. Watch. I don't trust Kamala to run this country. We spoke to new Trump supporters at Arizona State. I like his policy on closed borders, and I don't like illegal immigration. He talks like I talk with my friends. Aiden Garth is a regular Joe Rogan listener and voted early for Trump. If people sit down and actually watch the full long-term interview, uh, I think they'll see more kind of who Trump is, kind of not the evil guy that everyone makes him out to be. So in other words, there's a lot of people out there young, uh, old, right, men, women, uh, that are seen through the BS, okay, because we know the Democratic Party, they played this card before that Trump is bad. And people just see right through it because you're not speaking their language. Uh, and if you're having a problem with young people, uh, then you're definitely going to have a problem in this election. Now, speaking of Joe Rogan, uh, it was just posted on X that Donald Trump wrapped up the podcast with Joe Rogan, and it was three hours. Watch this clip. Hello, world. <laughs> Hello, world. We just wrapped up a great podcast. We had a good time. I think you'll find it very interesting and enjoy it. Yeah, so the world will be waiting for that to post. We know it's going to break the internet, of course. And uh, obviously, Kamala Harris, she has no excuse on why she didn't do it. Now, we know why she couldn't do it is because um, she can't sit for three hours and truly have an insightful conversation, right? No disrespect, but I just think that's the reality. But unfortunately, her senior advisor does not believe that is the reasoning. Here's his excuse. Can I ask you about Rogan? Was there a Rogan invite to the vice president that was turned down? Is it something you would you would consider doing, given the, the size of that audience and given that a lot of the folks that Trump seems to be targeting might be listening to that? Well, yeah, I think that the vice president's happy to go anywhere and, and any place to talk to a broad segment of the country. We talked with uh, Rogan and his team about the podcast. Um, unfortunately, it isn't going to work out right now uh, because of the scheduling of this this period of the campaign. Yeah, we know that's just a bunch of bull because you make time for what you care about. Obviously, she really wanted to reach men. And she really wanted to get her message out there. She would sit down for Joe Rogan. It's just the bottom line. I mean, if you look at her campaign schedule. She's not doing as many events as Trump is doing on average. OK, she maxes out maybe one or two per day uh, so that that no one's going to buy that excuse. OK, the results matter. The outcomes matter. And the bottom line is Trump has done more podcast episodes uh, than Kamala Harris has. He's reached more people than Kamala Harris has. So um, obviously their strategy right now from the Kamala Harris campaign is to bring out celebrity after celebrity after celebrity. But we know how that turned out the last time they did that with Hillary Clinton. Along with Samuel L. Jackson, Tyler Perry, Spike Lee, all headlining for Kamala Harris in Metro Atlanta on Thursday. Also appearing together with Harris on the same stage for the first time, Barack Obama. With 11 days to go, I gotta tell you, to this reporter, it feels a little familiar because I remember these scenes from 2016, when Hillary rallied, Hillary Clinton rallied in Philadelphia with Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen. And we all know how it turned out. And now, once again, the same cultural clash, the split screen is on pretty sharp display. I tried to sound the alarm about him back in 2016, but it was really an uphill climb because people could not literally imagine 
uh, that uh, he posed a danger or that his uh, character was so lacking uh, when it came to the responsibility of being president. So I, I totally understand that. But now there's just too much evidence about what he wants to do. I mean, you guys have been hearing me say it out of touch, right? They're not meeting people where they're at. You keep bringing celebrities out like she's bringing Beyonce out in Houston. That's not going to get votes. Tyler Perry out in Atlanta, Georgia. That's not going to get votes. And it has been proven time and time again that celebrities do not impact elections. Now, maybe we might be wrong. Maybe. But I highly doubt it. So this is why it's very important to see the full picture, right? The media is going to try to tell people uh, all the great things about Kamala Harris and leave out what the reality is. OK, she's lost major endorsements. She's under polling when it comes to Latino and the black community. OK, she's not doing the same numbers Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden was doing during their candidacy. And Trump is doing better than he ever has. You take all those things into consideration. You combine that with an economy where 49 percent of people say they're not doing as good as they were four years ago. You've got the foreign wars overseas. I mean, this is a recipe where she should actually lose. It doesn't matter what she does. She should lose full stop. But that's my opinion. We'll see what happens, obviously, as we continue to make videos leading up to the election about 11 days out. Uh, but I want to hear what your thoughts are about the development. Washington Post refuses to endorse her, owned by Jeff Bezos, by the way, if you didn't know that. Um, voters continue to cry out to hear the message they really want to hear. The campaign keeps ignoring it. I want to hear your thoughts on that. And this whole strategy where she's bringing out all of the celebrities. Do you think that's really going to work? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, speaking of voters, there was a focus group where they interviewed Pennsylvania undecided voters and what they had to think about Kamala Harris's closing message. Uh, let's just say they slammed it. So if you want to check out that video, I just dropped it today. You can click on it because it's coming up right now.